looks a little bit like a Mavic. It folds a little bit like a Mavic. Does it fly like a Mavic? This is a Vizio 809 and we're going to review it right now. So this is our first review for a website called RC Moment. They are a supplier of drones, quadcopters, anything that flies basically and thank you very much to them for sending us this drone for review. Now, interesting question for you that I'll put on the screen now as a poll. Are you interested in seeing the packaging that these various drones arrive in? And by packaging, I don't mean the box, I mean the packaging like this and also the DHL bag that these actually come in. I always find it interesting to see that because when you order products from a company, you want to see how they're going to arrive. And so comment now in the poll that you can see on the screen, yes or no, in my unboxings, do you want to see the actual outside packaging as well? Anyway, onto the review. This is the Vizuo, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, XS809HW. Now there are a few different models of this with different numbers, but we'll move on to that later. So <laughs> you can immediately recognize this box picture here. Obviously it's a copy of the DJI Mavic in terms of visible and visual aesthetics anyway. Whether it's a similar in functionality, we will see. Looking at the back of the box, you can see there that we have the WHDG, and there are lots of different versions here, some with different colors, some with different transmitters or no transmitter at all. So let's have a look inside. Fairly nice packaging on the outside. Got a battery there, it's a one cell, blimey, 3.7 volt, 900 milliamp. So that really is a tiny little battery, which gives us an indication as to the size of this drone, which is probably very small. Oh, it's really nice. <laughs> now this is a budget drone. Click the link in the video description to see how much it's currently retailing at. But that's really, really cute, actually. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, now, obviously, it is based on the Mavic in terms of the shape of it. It's designed to look like one. And I think probably it's, well, it's obviously a toy grade drone, but if you have kids or you have a, a partner who's always wanted a Mavic, but you don't have a thousand pounds or thousand dollars to spare, maybe this will tide them over until they've got enough money. So it is a folding drone, as you can see. The arms click nice and rigidly into place. Got some large props on here, maybe five, six, six inch props possibly. And they are plastic. Uh, it looks like they are push on, it's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, I think so, possibly push on. Uh, the main shell here is all plastic, it's very lightweight. And I would say this weighs probably about 200 grams, something like that. Maybe not even that much actually. Looking at the ends of the arms here, the motors are brushed. It's not a brushless drone, this, so don't expect it to perform and fly anywhere near as well as the actual DJI Mavic. Uh, there is a small gearbox here as well. You can see from the shape of the arms that the motors actually sat upright there, driving this tiny little cog, which in turn is spinning the main prop. Looking at the front, we've got the camera. There's a little bit of protective plastic on there. We'll take that off. And the camera on here, again, don't expect 4K or 1080p. The camera actually is a two megapixel camera. The lens on there gives an FOV of about 120 degrees, which isn't so bad. And you're gonna get 720p from this apparently, but obviously during the flight test, we'll show you some example video. Another note regarding the camera, it does tilt up and down slightly. You've got about 30 degrees downward tilt on there, or level, so you've got a few options there. And finally, on the front, there are two small little red LEDs. So no doubt they are to give you an indication of the front and the back when you're flying it. We've also got what look to be LEDs on the legs here, and in fact, if I just turn this on quickly, oh, there you go, look at that. Now, you might not be able to see them very well in this light, but we've got the red LEDs on the front, which are nice and clear. And then the legs also flash with different colors to show you the front and the back. Besides that, inside here, the little flight controller is gonna give you features such as 3D flip, altitude hold, and the regular features that you expect from drones like this. Now, if I have a look here at the back, we've got the battery bay and that very easily slides out like that. Now there are three different packages available, click the link in the video description to see them, but I actually chose a package which comes with two batteries. Um, there are some other packages as well which offer three, uh, very cheap, you know, this is a budget drone and hopefully it's gonna be quite a bit of fun. So I'll slot the battery 
back in like that. Underneath we've also got an on and off switch down here and then hidden next to that is a tiny little micro SD card slot. So a lot of these cheap budget drones have live Wi-Fi streaming and the problem there is that the video that you capture from them is captured via that live feed which means it's degraded, it's a bit latent, it has intermittent interference. So the benefit of an onboard SD card is that that video is captured and stored straight on the drone so hopefully we might actually see 720p from this. Now in terms of charging this drone you won't find a USB port on the drone itself so to get your photos and video off the drone you pull the SD card out and put it into your PC but quite a nice idea here you get the USB charging cable the batteries actually have a small USB port on them. Now I've often wondered why manufacturers don't do that but obviously you've got the charging circuits and I guess they don't want to keep reproducing that in each battery but these batteries are independently charged so you plug the USB cable straight into the battery like that and then you plug the other end into a PC or a phone charger and that will charge probably nice and quickly seen as these are only one cell 900 milliamp batteries. So nice design idea there. So all in all, I would say they've done quite a good job of creating this actually. It is a ripoff of the DJI Mavic, but it's well made, it's well constructed, and it doesn't feel or look cheap actually. This would make a lovely gift for somebody that's obsessed with drones and has always wanted a Mavic but can't afford one yet. We'll now have a quick look at what else is in the box. So we've got a transmitter, and this looks very much like an Xbox transmitter. We've got the joystick controls here which are analog so you've got proportional control here hopefully. We've got trigger buttons on the shoulders here which luckily are labelled. Now that's rare, they're normally not labelled. But this is our speed sensitivity and then we've got one for doing flips. We've also got a takeoff landing button and a stop button. Now that's important, many of these budget drones don't have an emergency cutoff so if they are flying away out of control you don't have the ability to just terminate them. So stop hopefully will kill the props and make it land. We've got directional controls here, not sure what they do but we'll have a look at that on the flight test. On and off button here for the actual transmitter and you will have to put batteries in the back, they don't come with it. And then we've got some controls here, so it looks like we've got a return to home button here. Now that's not going to be using any kind of GPS or positioning, it just uses the compass and will send it back generally in the direction that you last launched it, but that's not necessarily going to come back to you. We've got the photo and the video buttons, and then finally we've got this button here which looks like a headless mode, and again we'll see what that does in the flight test. And then finally for the transmitter, this part here actually folds out and like that, so that once you've got your live Wi-Fi stream from the drone, you can sit your phone into this extendable section here and fly with your real-time preview on the screen. So quite a nice design there, nice and compact. And finally, also in the box, we've got an instruction manual and a pack of accessories. In the pack of accessories, we have some spare props, which is good. You know, this is a budget quadcopter. You normally don't get all of this bundled in, and especially for the price of this thing, it is cheap. So we've got a set of prop guards. That's quite a nice idea, because if you are new to flying drones, it's nice just to have that little bit of added security, especially when you're flying indoors. So to fit the prop guards, you're gonna to have to prise this little bit of plastic out of the ends of the arms. Be careful when you're doing that, and obviously get assistance if you're using a knife and you're young. <laughs> um, the prop guard then slots into there in place of that little plastic bit, just like that. And then the remaining accessories, so we've got four spare props, one for each corner. We've got a USB charging cable, which has a USB port on the end, so that's the same sort of port you'd use for charging a mobile phone, and a screwdriver. So you'll remember that so many of these Wi-Fi connected drones use the Wi-Fi UFO app. Well, this one uses a similar app. It's actually called Drone 720p. And I must add a correction in here. In a short while, you'll see that my live video feed didn't work very well with this app. But during further testing, I found that it worked perfectly with the old Wi-Fi UFO app. Therefore, if you get live feed issues, try the other app instead. And it's made by the same people who are the good old Eosheen. So press install to get that installed and accept the permissions that it requires.
And after a short amount of time, that app will have fully installed. It's only tiny and it won't take too long. And there is also a similar app as well for iOS. Once it's finished installing, click open. And then of course, the next thing we need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi of the drone. So drop down your Wi-Fi options and connect to Wi-Fi 720p. Now it's an open network. Oddly, there's no password, which is quite unusual for these Wi-Fi connected drones. So once you're connected, go back to the app and then press play. That will connect us and we now get a live stream from the drone. So if I move it around, we've got a lot of interference and breakup here actually, which is odd. Not quite sure why that is. Might be the screen recorder interfering with it, not quite sure. But we have a 720 live stream rather than your average 480 that you normally get over these Wi-Fi links. In terms of latency, latency is not bad at all. I'm really not sure why we're getting this breakup, but the latency is very, very quick. I would say less than 100 milliseconds, which is very surprising. So we're gonna put batteries into our transmitter. We've got the app already connected. Next thing to do is take it out for a test flight. So we've had a look at the hardware. We've unboxed it and inspected it. Now it's time to flight test the Visuo 809, which obviously we've already talked about is a Mavic clone. It's very unlikely it's gonna fly anything like a Mavic. It's certainly not gonna be as stable as it because this thing costs less than $50. But for a cheap clone, well-made, it's got a little camera on the front of it which might give us 720p and we've got a SD card installed in there as well so we can have a look at some sample footage. So first thing I'm gonna do, I've got the battery in there. I'm gonna turn it on, which of course will start it emitting its Wi-Fi signal. I'm also at the same time going to turn on the transmitter, which I've now put batteries into. Now in terms of the pairing process, okay, so I've just basically put the throttle to naught back up to full again and that seems to have paired it quite nicely. What I'm now going to do is get my phone, see if we can see any Wi-Fi network yet, yeah, there we go, Wi-Fi 720p. We've already connected that in the past anyway. Now connected, I'm now going to start up the 720p app. Uh, okay, we're getting a picture. Lots of breakup though for some reason. We're getting the same issue that we had before, but oh uh, well, it might be to do with screen recording that I've got running on here. Now I don't really have a suitable takeoff place here, but I'm just going to put it on my bag. So let's give a takeoff. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Press and take off now. And we're up in the air. Now there's a bit of a breeze coming in at the moment. It's not too bad though. Now remember it does have altitude hold on this drone. And so I'm not touching the throttle at the moment. Um, but it doesn't have any kind of GPS positioning. So therefore I'm having to compensate for the wind here. But it's very, uh, very stable actually. Now I'm just gonna see I've got sensitivity controls on the top of this transmitter so I'm just going to press those now that's better and we've got three levels of speed there I'm on the third now which is much more responsive controls are proportionate as well so if I press the throttle or the aileron a little bit it moves a little bit but that is really quite stable actually hopefully you're getting a good shot of it right now looks quite nice in the air as well <laughs> so we're in um, top sensitivity mode, which you really need to be in if you're flying when it's windy. Let's give this bit of a fly around. I can't believe it's a one cell battery powering this. <laughs> it flies really well actually. I mean, it's, it's no Mavic, but the altitude holds working absolutely brilliantly. Um, it's not dropping in altitude a lot when I'm giving it forward pitch, which is also good. That is a really good flyer. I am shocked that this is only a one cell battery. I wonder if that's a misprint on the battery actually because uh, even a 2S would be impressive to be able to fly like this. So let's give it a bit of altitude. Ascends nice and quickly. Now remember again, there's no position hold on this. I'm flying this entirely manually. Up nice and high now. I mean, if from this altitude, it looks like a Mavic in the air. <laughs> My live feed is working but I've got a lot of interference on there I don't quite know why but it might be my phone or the screen recorder app that I've got running on there possibly 
but I am actually really surprised at how well this flies. Now if I just descend down, it comes down very slowly. Now that's probably to avoid any prop wash, being that this is really for beginners. But that flies great. Now one test that we really should do is to see what happens when we turn the transmitter off. So I'm hoping it will just drop out of the sky or land. So this is safety really to see what would happen if you flew out of range. So transmitter turning off now. Well it's drifting and it looks like it's landing itself but unfortunately because of the wind it's going to land in the bushes. Oh no looks like we're lucky and there you go it's just descended. So from a safety perspective that's nice you know that it's not just simply going to fly away out of control. It gives it a few seconds to see if it can regain connection and then it lands safely so that's good. I'm really impressed with this. Right okay um, stop video recording. Okay so I've got to reconnect it by just putting the throttle to naught and then to max again. Hand launch this time so here we go press take off let's see what happens. Oi. <laughs> there it goes right now sensitivity again up to node 3 and really uh, just safe for safety I'd recommend always flying on that third mode just because you've got far more control over the drone than in the event of wind taking it off. Now we've got a flip button let's give that a go so we're gonna go for some acrobatics here ready here we go <laughs> that's a big drone to be doing acrobatics like that but it does it quite gracefully let's try another one very cool very smooth do another one <laughs> I'm gonna start video recording and let's do another one of those see if we can get it on video here we go <laughs> getting a good long flight time as well so again it says it's only a 900 milliamp battery but it's doing very very well so another feature we've got here is return to home now this is normally not very effective because it just uses compass not gps but if i press the return to home button now and you see it's flying back the wrong way as i expected don't ever rely on the return to home buttons on these compass powered drones they need a gps for that to work properly the other one is um, headless mode so if i press that yeah no i don't like headless mode essentially you can control the drone as if it's uh, always facing um, in one direction but it just doesn't work very well so i wouldn't bother with headless mode but this thing just flies really really well it's so stable as i say i've got a bit of wind here but really good now in terms of the con directional controls that we've got on here they are for trimming it so when i've got this wind here if i use those controls there we go so using the directional controls on the controller here i've trimmed it so that it's ignoring the wind essentially now so if i trim it a little bit more i can probably get it into almost perfect hover there you go that's not bad is it <laughs> i'm very very impressed with this right let's go for a bit of altitude now remember if I fly this out of range it has no GPS it's not going to fly back to me but the range shouldn't be too bad I'd expect probably about 50 meters because it's Wi-Fi controlled and it's quick as well surprisingly quick it just flies great I mean if you're looking to learn how to fly quadcopters this would certainly be a great one to start with because it's got the scale and the size that's good and it just flies really really nicely just wish my live feed was working a little bit better I can't believe the flight time I'm getting on this really really impressive and it's very stable as well <laughs> um, you know at no point does it feel like this thing is going to tip up or lose control it just flies beautifully the altitude hold is very very good I'm not touching the throttle at the moment and yet it's maintaining its altitude fairly well so overall I would say this thing's really really impressive for the price the fact that you get a transmitter with it the fact that the controls are all proportionate it's got no GPS etc but it has a camera 720p apparently and look how stable it is in the air really really good so that is my review of the Vizuo 809 overall I give it a thumbs up great fun cheap and brilliant for learning how to fly 
Okay, so you can see we've got the lights flashing on the underside now. That's an indication that the battery is getting weak now. So I'm going to bring it over here towards our bag and press the land button on the controller like this. And there it is. Very neat and tidy. As it's landing, you've still got full control over the drone as well. So that's really good. I'm impressed with that. Right, on to the summary for this drone. Now, you'll notice that during my flight test video, there wasn't any example video footage, and that's because unfortunately, the SD card that I'd inserted wasn't formatted to FAT32, and so the video didn't record. But I will try and capture some video afterwards, and I'll add a link to the video description for you to download it. Take a look now to see if I've done that already. In the meantime, here's the positives. It's cheap and cheerful, this quad is great fun and a pleasure to fly, especially considering the price. It's well built and the construction is lightweight but durable, and the folding mechanism works brilliantly as well. The flight time is very impressive for a one cell 900mA battery, you get around 10 minutes flight time. The transmitter is comfortable, responsive and also the controls are proportional, which makes flying much easier. It's stable and solid in the air, despite being very lightweight, but at no point did this quad hesitate or feel unbalanced. And it includes spare props and even prop guards. Now for the negatives. The SD card slot seems to be a little bit fussy, so do some testing with your SD cards to ensure that they work in this drone, otherwise you might lose out on some video opportunities. The drone obviously has no GPS positioning and so it won't position hold, but for the price it's hardly a surprise. And the live feed may not work with the Wi-Fi 720p app, instead use the Wi-Fi UFO app, the same app that you use for most of the Eoshin drones. And that's it really, I can't think of anything else negative to say about this drone and I really genuinely enjoyed flying it for this review. It isn't a Mavic, as we pretty much expected, but it is great fun, it's a good size, it's foldable as well, and I have to recommend it. Links to the product are in the video description, and drop a comment below. And please, please, please subscribe if you're not already a Droning On subscriber. We have more exciting reviews coming later this week. Thanks very much for watching.